Welcome to this tutorial showing you how to create a piece of artwork in response to the artist Joshua Davidson. And you'll see in Photopia, I've already opened up a photograph of myself. And I'm just going to use the magic wand tool to select the background and press delete to get rid of the background. Okay, I'm now going to open up a new project. So file, new, and I want it to be square. So I'm going to go print A4 and I'm going to change the height to match the width. So they're both the same. Click create and I have a square project to work in. Okay, right. Now I'm going to use the rectangle select tool to select the whole of my photo. Press Control C to copy it. Go to my new project and press Control V to paste it in. And then I'm going to use the arrow tool just to move it to the bottom left hand corner. And I'm going to make it just a little touch bigger. OK. And then I'm going to use the rectangle select tool to divide my photo in half at a point where I want it to be, which is just the back of my eye there. And I'm going to use the arrow tool to move that bit right the way over to the bottom right hand corner. OK, so I have this gap between the two. Right. Then I'm going to use the rectangle select tool again to make a very thin mask over a very small slither of my face. I'm then going to control C and control V that so it's on its own layer. And then I'm going to stretch that using the arrow tool, the whole width of the piece of work. And while it's stretched, I'm going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I just want to smooth it down a bit. So that will do about seven pixels. OK. In fact, I'll go 10. There you go. Right. So now I'm going to grab the arrow tool and just bring it back so that it fits in that gap between the two halves of my face. So it's already looking like I've been stretched at a point. OK, now I'm going to go to edit and transform and warp. And I'm going to move these middle handles up to make it look like it's kind of warping upwards. And then I'm going to move the other middle handles down to make this kind of wave effect. OK. And that's the first part of making this piece of work. OK. Right, now I've got that kind of wave happening. I can now make it look even more wavy. So I'm going to go Filter, Distort, Wave. And you'll see it opens this menu and puts all of these kind of waves on your picture. So we want to bring the X scale right the way down because we don't want horizontal waves, we want vertical waves. And then we can start playing with the minimum and maximum length and with the minimum and maximum amplification until we get the waves that we want. OK, it's going to be different for each photo and for you, you know, personally, you're going to be able to choose what you want. This is looking pretty good. You should also make sure while you've got this box open that you have selected the little drop down to say repeat edge pixels too. OK, right now I've got my effects going on. I've noticed that I've got a little bit here that I want to sort out so they better connect. So I'm going to go to that layer and a rectangle select that bit and just use the arrow tool just to shimmy that down a little bit so that they flow nicely together. OK, I also see that this has knocked the collar out from being flowing. So I'm just going to shrink the bottom up a little bit so that the collar of my T-shirt still flows nicely. OK. 
Right, now we've got that bit at the bottom that needs just cropping off. I'm going to right click and merge down so that those two layers merge together. And I'm just going to use the rectangle select to select the whole thing. And I'm just going to use the arrow tool just to shimmy those down. There we go. Right, now I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Hue Saturation. And I'm just going to bring up the saturation a bit just to make it a little bit more vibrant. Then I'm going to go Image, Adjustments, Replace Color. And that's going to open up this menu. And it's already set to pink because that's a prominent color in my photo. And I can use the Hue and Saturations change what is pink into a different color, in this case, blue. OK, and I'm going to do the same again. Um, this time I'm going to click on that little color and then I'm going to click on my picture, the color that I want to change. And that's going to allow me to then again use hue and saturation and lightness to change the color of whatever color I've just selected. So this brown. I'm now changing to a kind of orangey color. Okay. Okay. And actually I'm going to do it again. I'm just going to change the color of the t-shirt. So image adjustments, replace color, and then click on the box, go to the picture and click on it. What the color that you want to change and then use the hue and saturation bars and the lightness if you want, but I don't really want to change the lightness at the moment until you get a alternative color that you want. I'm not sure whether I want it to be a kind of turquoisey blue or a purple. I think I might stick with the purple. I quite like that. Okay. All right, looking good. Now I'm just going to change up my background. So I'm going to make sure I'm on my background layer. Go to the color picker. I'm going to choose this kind of dirty pink and then use the paint bucket tool just to fill the background in. And that is the picture done and dusted if you want. But one thing you could do is just merge the layers together. So your background and foreground are all on one layer and just use image adjustments, hue, saturation, um, just to play with the hue bar and see if there are any alternative colors that um, might work better. And so you see you can run along the whole of the hue bar and it will change all the colors. Um, and you can choose and select a different color if you like. As it is, I like these colors, so I'm going to consider this piece done and dusted. And I hope you find this tutorial helpful.